Hi, and welcome back to Deep Six Wrestling. I'm your host, Jess Pat, and this is our official post-show recap, review, going over the results of the G1 Climax 29 for New Japan. This is going to be covering nights 5, 6, 7, and 8. It was kind of a hectic weekend for me, so didn't really get the chance to put out uh, um, a post-show uh, for, for nights 5, 6, and 7 as I originally planned to because they were all back-to-back, -back, so I plan on doing those, and then 8 by itself, and so on, but got kind of busy so here we are i'm officially all caught up on on the climax if you the, the g1 climax if you just just go with it but um yeah uh so you know if you're new to deep six wrestling be sure to hit the subscribe button down below be sure to follow us over on twitter at deep six wrestling anytime that we're up for a, a g1 climax show we're live tweeting same for all wwe shows all AEW shows you get the point so go follow us on uh, twitter over there Again, it'll be right below me at Deep Six Wrestling, and it'll be down in the description below. But without further ado, let's just get right into things for the G1 Climax 29, nights 5, 6, 7, and 8. All right, so if you've been following this series and, and my general predictions for the G1 Climax, uh, going into night 5, uh, my record for, for matches was 11 and 9. So not, not doing too hot to start things off. And night five uh, didn't really help me out all, all that much. So for, for block matches, we had, uh, you know, it was it was actually a really, really good night when you look at the, the overall matches we got. Um, Kenta versus Lance Archer. Uh, but again, Lance Archer and Kenta, honestly, both of them, they're, they're both having incredible tournaments. So it's really nice to see these two go at it. And it was a different style of match for both guys. And Kenta picked up the win here. My only real gripe with it was the finish. I uh, saw Kenta tap out Lance Archer rather than hit the GTS. And as soon as he got him uh, in his submission hold, Archer like immediately tapped. I feel like he could have sold it a bit more, but it's fine. The actual match itself was really good. So no real complaints there. That was, that was a really good match. Uh, again, both guys super impressive this tournament, specifically Lance Archer for somebody who I think a lot of people were kind of doubting going into this, but yeah, I think he's really delivering, and he's definitely getting a, new, a bunch of new fans for this. Uh, we also had Okada versus Bad Luck Fale. It was uh, it was a match. You know, Okada picked up the win. Uh, so I got both of those right, which is good. Those were the only two matches I got right for Night 5, which is kind of depressing. But, you know, uh, it's you win some, you lose some. Uh, we also got uh, Tanahashi versus Zack Sabre Jr. And, again, um, I, I had Zack Sabre Jr. doing very well this tournament, and... Unfortunately, Zack Sabre Jr. is not doing very well this tournament, but Tanahashi picks up another win, and yeah, you know, uh, Tanahashi's, I, I was, I, I've been pretty open that I've been skeptical, or was skeptical about Tanahashi being in this tournament, but after his matches with Okada and Kenta, and now with Sabre, I'm totally okay with him being in here, he's looking better than I thought he was going to be in terms of health-wise and physical uh, physical capabilities but um yeah so saber loses tanahashi wins i don't get a point for that one uh then we got evil versus sonata some lij cross battles or uh, civil war not really a civil war it's not like bullet club civil war but you get the point uh it's lij on lij and this match was great this was honestly definitely one of the, the better matches on night five i thought these guys just their chemistry is really great i definitely would like to see this revisited once lij splits or once one of them splits from lij for probably a title i really feel like that could be really strong both guys are incredibly talented and they're both pretty young so you know future stars in new japan right here um i had sonata winning i was genuinely really shocked when i saw evil pick up the win here but i wasn't upset by it uh evil's really great i still remember his days when he was watanabe uh, which is, it's just so shocking thinking like, when was that? I guess 2015. I don't know when he joined LIJ. I think it was 2015 or 2016 that he joined LIJ and became evil. And it's just, it was such a big like paradigm shift for a character. And just like his presentation has completely changed. His moves have completely, uh, he's just, he's so good now. Like, uh, yes, good, good, good. Uh, definitely if you haven't seen the match, go check it out. Sonata versus evil was definitely one to watch. And then the main event was Will Ospreay versus Kota Ibushi, uh, the battle of the, the injured people. And for a match featuring two, I don't want to say super injured people, but two injury or yeah, two injured guys, you know, it was, it was really good. Uh, this is definitely one of the best matches of the tournament so far. And there was only two spots where I was genuinely like, 
uh, cringing because of like um, because of the fact that Osprey just had like a ne neck injury and had to get pulled for a night and then they just start he only took like two spots that were like made me feel terrible for his neck and so that's good and Kota Ibushi didn't you know for somebody who I consistently get like scared of him like dying in the ring he didn't do anything here that made me like be like please sir stop this um so that was good but yeah these guys just it was definitely it was a more more it was it was definitely slower pace than I expected from seeing their match at Wrestle Kingdom this year so that was definitely unexpected but just like the way they worked the match was really fun and interesting and you know uh it's it's just it's one to watch i don't really i don't want to say anything about it and like name spots that like are really cool because there's a lot of them and the, the entire like final sequence of this match is, is that's something i've noticed with new japan matches like the final sequences of their matches are just so well like structured for like their big matches not like not like a not like a yano match or anything but you get the point um, but yeah, Will Ospreay lost, Kota Bushi picks up the win, I had Osprey, and so I don't get a point there, and so I go two and three for night five, which is very depressing for me, but, uh, you know, like I said before, you win some, you lose some, and that's night five for you. Alright, moving on to night six, we got another pretty good night here, again, there hasn't really been a, a terrible night of the G1 so far, which is really good, because when you have so many nights back to back to back like this, it can kind of get uh, a bit overwhelming, and you can get tired out but they've been delivering like so consistently this year so uh really can't knock them on that um we got some really nice matches here we got uh jeff cobb versus juice robinson and like i said in my predictions video which you can watch right here uh jeff cobb is an interesting person for new japan or specifically the g1 climax because i don't think going in anybody expected him to win many matches i certainly didn't and but he's but i did say he was gonna have a really impressive tournament and he's delivering that wholeheartedly from his uh first match with ishii uh, all, all the way through now the only, i mean him versus moxley wasn't great but i wouldn't fully put the blame on jeff cobb for that i think both guys are to blame but uh this match was really good you know it was nice to see juice and uh cobb together and i thought these guys had a really solid match it wasn't like anything mind-blowing but it was a really it was a really fun match and jeff cobb picks up a win which i predicted this was uh one of the very few jeff cobb uh wins i have predicted for this tournament and i got it right so i was pretty happy about that um uh, juice is also just having a really good tournament i feel like i should say that and i'm really digging the new look the uh, the whole thundertaker thing i think it's a great style for him it, it while it looks goofy, it feels more serious and toned down than previous attires for him. And I think that's working for the character direction he's going in of becoming the more serious and less playful Juice Robinson while also keeping up the fun babyface aspect of his character. And I really like that. I think that's a great transition for him as he heads into towards the end of the tournament when he faces Moxley again in their rematch. And I'm most likely facing him for a third time for the title that he lost uh, being the US title. Uh, probably, I would assume, beginning of September. But yeah, pretty happy with this. Um, we also got Jay White versus Toro Yano, and uh, I predicted Toro Yano, I think, to get two wins this tournament, and he's already beaten two people who I didn't think he was gonna win, uh, beat. He beat Tetsuya Naito, and now he beat Jay White here, and that was just shocking to me. But you know, it's Yano, and it's fine. Both guys can come back, and they've already started their comeback, so good for them but yeah this is this is a nice little comedy match again i can't knock it you know yano's there to give people a break and he did so accordingly here we also got shingo versus tai chi and i had shingo beating tai chi and shingo did in fact beat tai chi so that's a win for me i'll take it uh we also got tetsuya naito versus hiroki goto i had naito beating goto naito beat goto and that makes me happy and you know i thought that was that was really good and if that was the main event it would have been fine but our main event was john moxley versus tomohiro ishii and boy oh boy what a match uh going into the g1 or not even going into the g1 climax going into night six moxley hadn't really delivered a great match yet but he delivered a great match here and i think it's in part due to him caring more about this match and also the fact that he's with ishii and i think their styles mesh so well and Ishii is probably going to, when it's all said and done, uh, I think he's going to go down as the MVP of this year's tournament. 
every single match he's been a part of, even the undercard tag matches have been absolutely great. And he's he's had, including this match, he's had three of my matches of the tournament so far. He had him versus uh, uh, Jeff Cobb, him versus Jay White, and now him versus John Moxley. Absolutely great. And they're all different matches. And I think that's really, really good. Again, when you're in a tournament like this, when you're seeing the same guys wrestle, uh, like we uh, night in, night in, I just, it's just so, it's so refreshing to see like, a wrestler bring variety to their matches and i think ishii is doing that and i think that's absolutely absolutely great uh so definitely if this is this is easily one of the matches of the tournament if you haven't seen it yet go check out uh moxley versus ishii you can go get it on new japan world i don't want to encourage illegal streaming but if that's the route you're gonna go you can also find it there just go see this match whatever means necessary and talk about it because more people need to see this so good and that brings us to the end of night six. I did have Ishii beating Moxley. That didn't happen. So I finished night six, three and two. All right. So night seven is a thing that happened. Uh, it does feature arguably one of the matches of the year. And again, one of the matches of the tournament. But it also featured uh, Zack Sabre Jr. versus Bad Luck Fale in a match that was a thing that happened. Uh, you know, uh, seeing Bad Luck Fale versus Lance Archer and then seeing this, it's just like two completely different things. Lance Archer and Bad Luck Fale had a really, really, really fun match and then him and Sabre go out there and it was, it, it, it existed. Uh, this was one match where I had Zack Sabre Jr. losing. Again, if I, if my predictions were right, I had Sabre going off to a really hot start for this and it's in fact the opposite of that, but... I had him losing to Fale here, and Fale ended up losing, and so Zack Sabre Jr. gets his first one in the tournament, which, uh, yay for me, because I'm a Zack Sabre Jr. fan, but it was a, in a nothing match against Bad Luck Fale, so it's whatever. Uh, we also got Tanahashi versus Archer, and I think this is probably both of their weakest matches of the tournament so far. Um, I think Archer versus Osprey still probably his best match so far. And Tanahashi, I'd probably say, Ta for me personally, I'd say Tanahashi versus Kenta was the his best match, but this wasn't bad by any means. It's just kind of, it wasn't up to par with what they delivered so far. Uh, Tanahashi beat Lance Archer, which I did predict correctly. So that's a point for me. Uh, we also got Abushi versus Sonata. Uh, this, this was great. So n nothing, no real complaints here. This was, again, both guys are super talented. Both guys are really good, so, you know, no complaints here. Hats off to them. Uh, I predicted Kota Ibushi to win here, and Kota Ibushi did win here, so that's another point for me. Um, then we got Kenta versus Evil, and I don't know why, 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 why I chose Evil to be Kenta. Kenta's having, I think he's still undefeated as of right now, yeah. Um, and I, I, for some reason, I chose Evil to end that streak. Uh, I feel like an absolute absolute moron for that but yeah uh this match was good um evil is having a really solid tournament uh kent is having a great tournament they have good chemistry it's a fun match go watch it if you haven't not like a top recommended match of the tournament but if you like kenta or evil it's worth watching um like i said evil beats kenta or kenta beats evil i predicted that evil was going to beat kenta so i don't get a point here and then the big thing here, the, the, one, the one that everybody wants to talk about is Osprey versus Okada. Uh, Osprey being Will Osprey. Uh, this was, oh my God. Um, this was, this was crazy. So uh, I did not watch, this was the one night I didn't watch live. And uh, it was home, like even not live and knowing the results was just, it still felt so, so, so unpredictable. These guys have insane chemistry. I'm still really shocked that they didn't have Saber or Osprey beat Okada for uh, to set up a title match for Royal Quest. I'm sure some one of them is still. Uh, ugh. I'm sure one of them is still going to get a title shot there. It just kind of felt weird that they didn't have them beat Okada in the tournament, but it's not really a complaint. You know, it's fine. Uh, Osprey's still technically a junior, and Saber is. It's clearly leading to some type of story with Saber losing his mind. Um, but yeah, this match, oh my god, just, uh, again, Will Ospreay's injured, which is crazy that he's, like, working the level he is right now. I know it's like a neck injury, but, like, and theoretically he can still do flippy stuff. It's not like he, like, broke his leg or something, but, like, 
he's still so goddamn good in the ring and Okada is easily one of the best in the world, no doubt in my mind. And these guys just tore it down in just a barn burner of a match. Um, again, I really, I really thought Osprey was gonna win here, but he didn't and I'm not even upset about it. They both came out looking really good here. I'm really starting to think, I don't wanna say it's gonna happen cause I don't, I don't think it's gonna happen, but I think that there's a slight possibility that they finally do it this year with Okada winning the G1. I'm also starting to think Kenta has a pretty good shot at winning this whole, like the whole tour, uh, tournament. But don't quote me on that because I still think Tetsuya Naito's got this in the bag. Uh, on Night 8, they mentioned it on commentary, they brought up the whole uh, Naito wanting both the IC title and the world title, so I do think we're still headed for that. But in the chance that Gato wants to go with like a crazy left field thing, I think Okada and Kenta should be the other two favorites to win this tournament. Um, but yeah, so uh, I chose Fale to go over Sabre, didn't get that right. I chose Tanahashi to go over Archer, I got that right. I chose Ibushi over Sonata, Ibushi got that win. I chose Evil over Kenta, Kenta got that. And I chose Osprey over Okada, Okada won. That leaves me two and three for night seven, which again is not a good night, but I did recover with night eight. Right, so night eight, I just finished watching this like 20 minutes ago and it was a, it was a fine night. It wasn't, again, it wasn't like, um, it wasn't on the edge of my seat or the entertainment, but it was still it was still solid enough where I would sit through it. <sighs> um, this was, oh boy, this was my best night. Uh, I went 5-0 in my predictions here, and that leaves me a very happy boy. So we got some nice matchups here. We got uh, Juice Robinson versus Toru Yanu. Juice picks up the win. Thank God. Give me that win. Uh, we got uh, Hiroki Goto versus Taichi. I had Taichi, and... Uh, towards the end of this match, I really thought Goto was going to pick up the win, but Taichi ended up getting him on a roll-up, and yes, give me all the Taichi wins, because I have him winning, I think I have him doing pretty well in the tournament, but yeah, um, I don't have Goto doing very well, so Goto, please continue to lose your matches, because I don't need you to win, uh, but Taichi gets the win, that's another point for me. We got Moxley versus Shingo Takage, I thought this was the match of the night, no doubt in my mind. I think Naito Ishii came close, but I do think Moxley and Shingo was better for me, at least personally. And I did have John Moxley winning, and John Moxley did win, and Moxley now continues a streak of good matches. I thought he had a great match with um, Tomohiro Ishii. I thought him versus Shingo was also really, really good. And again, like I said, strongest match on this card tonight. Uh, and then our semi-main event was Jay White versus Jeff Cobb. And Jay White finally gets a win. Thank God. Also, shout out to uh, shout out to Rob for this this Jay White shirt because it's really nice. He got it from like a pro wrestling crate, but he doesn't watch New Japan, so thank you, Rob. But uh, yeah, Jay White and Jeff Cobb they had a really really it was a slow hard hitting affair. Uh, I think the one spot that just like kind of just I feel they always like put over how big Jeff Cobb is, but then you look at Jay White and he's like a really tall guy and he's pretty beefy too. And um, Jeff Cobb was on. Um, on, I guess he was on the, the turnbuckle, and Jay was Jay White was on the apron, and he goes and he does a deadlift like vertical suplex over the over the top rope to, to Jay White, and I was like Jesus Christ! Jay, again, Jay is a big guy, so and they, they, Jeff Cobb's a strong guy. Let's we'll leave it at that. But uh, yeah, Jay White gets his first win, and that makes me so happy. I really, I honestly think Jay White's gonna go on the 6-0 run that he's about to go on. So that should be fun because I'm a big Jay White fan. And then our main event was Tetsuya Naito versus Tomohiro Ishii, and uh, Naito wins. Yeah, it was, yes, I'll take that. You know, I, I had Tetsuya Naito winning, and these two had a, another really solid match. Uh, you know, I think Ishii is, like I said earlier in this video, I think Ishii is definitely going to go get the MVP for this tournament, even if he doesn't win. Uh, but just match after match after match, this guy is just delivering some of the most consistent wrestling performances probably in the world today. So, you know, people are always talking about like, not like always, but like now we're talking about like Will Ospreay is the best wrestler in the world. But like you look at this tournament and while Ospreay is delivering great matches, look at Ishii and how consistent he is in delivering like night after night some of the best tournament matches. And for me, again, I think, um, I, I think him versus Jay White, it might be one of my matches of the year, so props to you, 
uh, Tomohiro Ishii, you're doing great stuff, man. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm pulling for you to one day win that IWGP Heavyweight Championship that has eluded you thus far in your career. But as a whole, Night 8 wasn't too special, but we got some good stuff. And more importantly, I went 5-0 in my predictions, so that makes me so, so goddamn happy. I'm really hoping I can keep this streak up. You know, I'm totally expecting uh, on Night 9 to just go 0-5. I have, for, for Night 9, I have... Abushi versus Archer. I have Abushi. I have Osprey versus Fale. I have Osprey winning. Please don't let uh, Bad Luck Fale win that. Uh, Zack Saber Jr. versus Evil. I'm looking at this now and I'm instantly regretting this. Uh, I have Evil winning. Oh boy. Um, Tanahashi versus Sonata. I have Sonata winning. That can kind of go either way. We'll see. And then Okada versus Kenta. This is probably going to be a very interesting one. Uh, I feel like this is going to be pretty divisive among people with predictions. I do have Okada, though it, Kenta is still undefeated. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. That's going to be a tough one. That'll definitely be one of the probably better matches of the tournament, but, you know, that's night eight, and that's a little look ahead to night nine uh, this weekend, and so we'll see what happens then. All right, with that all being said, that brings us to the end of this week's video. Not even this week's, this this day's video of just the, the post show for the G1 Climax 29. If you enjoyed this, be sure to leave a like on the video. Be sure to comment down below who you think is having the best tournament so far and who you think is going to win the actual tournament for the G1 Climax 29. Also, be sure to subscribe to Deep Six Wrestling. Hit that subscribe button down below. Uh, just go follow us on Twitter at Deep Six Wrestling. It'll be down in the description and right below me right now. We live tweet events, we post polls, we post our videos, we interact with people. Go follow us over there, it's a good time. And yeah, uh, if you're enjoying this G1 Climax coverage, don't worry, I'll be continuing it throughout the tournament. And also be on the lookout for my five matches to watch series, which is a weekly thing every Thursday. I give you my personal recommendations on five matches to watch from this past week in pro wrestling and if you're watching the g1 it's a good way to know what i think is the best match each night because so far it's been basically a g1 takeover of that show because it's just been g1 matches and then the occasional 205 live match so good stuff over there but yeah that brings us to the end of the video i'll be back on i think the next g1 shows on saturday so i'll be back on saturday with a recap of that show right here at deep six wrestling peace